and welcome to Sync to Sync TV. I am your hostess, Sandra Justice, and we are here in the beautiful Savannah, Georgia, to share with you a little bit of Haitian history. Yes, I said it. Haitian history right here in Savannah, Georgia. But first, remember to check us out on www.sync2sync.tv.com, and we'll be right back. Big enough sing so sing. This is the hottest show in the world right now. I'm ready to be good as good as the power when I win. Même les ou en tour, c'est moi même qui m'en dois pas donc. Bye bye, au revoir. Va, va, va. Elephant Man represent. Sing so sing TV. They gave me nothing. Hey, so. Ooh, itching already. <laughs> One of the signs. I'm telling you, I was amazed when some of the things you were saying. I'm a shorty that's deep in love. Makes me believe. Woo, child, we talking about 2001, 2002. I'm going to show them otherwise. Man, I do music. <laughs> Has anyone seen that booty? <laughs> I'm pleasing him in music. I'm happy to be here. I know you are. Together we do the work. When I make music, I don't make it for me. I always sing one or two songs as a drummer. And we are back. Right behind me is an amazing monument that symbolizes the 500 men that volunteered in the American Revolution War. But before we get into this, I have an amazing man I want to introduce to you. He is a doctor, a professor, a hero to say the least, but I am not going to do you an injustice. I want you to introduce yourself to our Sink to Sink viewers. Welcome Dr. Emil Jamal Touré. Greetings. Welcome to Sinks to Sink TV. <laughs> Thank you, sister. Thank you. Greetings. And again, uh, Mir Jamal Ture, we deal with history and culture. We have a sense of pride. Mm -hmm. And you are absolutely correct. Where we are right now, this is a special spot. Probably one of the most special spots in the entire country. Wow. Some of us don't realize it, but that's why I'm so glad to be here with you and to be able to share the information with everyone out there who want to know our story. Yes, yes, and thank you so much for being on the show with us today. Now, tell me a little bit on the history for our viewers that are watching to understand what that meant with the 500 men, Haitian men that volunteered in this war. Absolutely, because many people don't realize, and I tell folks this, that school children in Haiti know what happened in Savannah, where most Americans don't even have a clue that right here you have between, in fact, between 500 to 800 African men who are affront you, free men coming from Haiti, who will fight in the American Revolution here in Savannah on October 9, 1779. And then they're not just fighting, they also are heroic during that day. What will happen, they will save the day for the patriots. So as I tell folks, if it was not for Haitian participation, we would not have something called the United States of America. And so those black men come from Haiti to now fight for this nation right here. And we are indebted to IAT. We are indebted to Mother Haiti. And yeah, so that's why we said this is wow. a special spot. And the monument is significant with regard to telling that story. Well, thank you, thank you. And from my understanding, you know, and I grew up here in the um, United States as well. We didn't learn this stuff in history. You're absolutely correct. And that's why here you go, people when they come into this square, and in fact, mm -hmm. the official name of the square is called Franklin Square. Oh. 
but I give it a nickname called Haitian Square. I like that, Haitian, right. Square. Haitian Square. Now, there were eight men um, that you mentioned to me that was involved in making this happen right here in Savannah, Georgia. Tell me a little bit about those eight men briefly and what role specifically you played in that. Okay, yes ma'am, because what happened, it was a conversation between Richard Schenholzer, who's from Savannah, uh -huh. and Daniel Fizeme, who was president of the Haitian American Historical Society in Miami. Mm -hmm. So he and Richard are having a conversation at a conference. Richard says, I'm from Savannah. Mm -hmm. Daniel says, wait a minute, uh, we fought in Savannah. <laughs> Richard wow. had an idea, because he had been told about this by one of our local historians. Uh -huh. So Richard comes back to Savannah, and because of our relationship, mm -hmm. he talked to Mayor Floyd Adams. Wow. So Mayor Adams now says, okay, let's go and work with them on this. And so from there, then he got council member Clifton Jones involved, mm -hmm. then got the city manager, uh, uh, Michael Brown, uh -huh. in addition, assistant city manager, Brian Gore, then Dr. Preston Russell, Scott Smith from the Coastal Heritage Society, and I also was a member. And so we were the team that's in Savannah. We were the liaison in Savannah to make this happen for the society, because they had the vision and they brought it forth by us working together. Wow. Now, just to, out of curiosity, out of those eight men, were any of them Haitians that came together or was it? I want to know. <laughs> well, I'm going to tell people this. I said that spiritually, I'm Aisha. That okay. I say that spiritually. But all of us are from here, right. from the U.S. Right. But some of us, like myself, and because Richard had been exposed to some of the history, mm -hmm. that's why, again, they were aware of it. And then there was a painting in City Hall mm -hmm. that Brian Gore had in his office. So now when all this comes about, people are like saying, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. And so that's why Mayor Adams had me get involved. And also Scott Smith said, hey, Jamal, you know this story. Wow. And so that's why it all came about from a Ooh. mere conversation. Wow. So many more questions to ask because I know you're not okay. Haitian. And I, we are so grateful to you and all the eight men. But we are going to have to be back after these videos. Healthcare workers and nurses are in high demand. Take your first step toward a medical career today at Ideal Professional Institute in Miami Gardens. With multiple programs available, you can become a patient care technician in just nine months, a home health aide in under one month, an LPN in just a year. Ideal Professional Institute is licensed by the state of Florida. So register now. Call 305-653-7886. And we are back, still here in this wonderful monument of 500 Haitian men that volunteered during the Revolutionary War. And I'm here with the amazing Dr. Touré, chatting a little bit, who is not of Haitian descent, but feels like he's one of our brothers. And I stress that only because, not that it's important, but it, it, I just feel so appreciative. And I think I speak for many of the Haitians when we see somebody who's not even of the culture taking the time to do the research and fighting for a cause such as as this now I'm looking up here and I see seven men and I know it was 500 so would you explain <laughs> and I know we're honoring everyone yes. but how did they come up with the concept of these seven men in fact James Masson who was the sculptor James when he was doing these uh, the shaping of the monument and the feeling of the monument and the spirit of the monument uh -huh. he realized that there's a message that needs to be conveyed and so what he did, each one of the figures up here has a special meaning. Okay. And we see Daniel Fiza May, who was kneeling. Okay. That represents the visionary. Okay. That for you to achieve anything in life, you got to have a vision. Exactly. Got to have that thought. Mm -hmm. Then what happened, you got to go forward. And so Wilfred Fiza May represents, again, the foot soldier. That's the one that is aiming and firing. Because, again, you got to go forward with regards to your vision. Wow. Then also, because to have a vision, you got to have a sacrifice. You got to make a sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Something you got to put to the side. So that's why you see the figure that's wounded. That's representing the sacrifice. Wow. And so what will happen, you will have ultimate victory. Mm -hmm. And that's where Lieutenant Colonel Dr. Rui Moise comes into play. He's in back of Daniel saying the ultimate victory. Mm -hmm. But even with all of that, somebody got to tell the story. Oh, yes. And that's the historian. And mm -hmm. so Masson used me as the figure uh -huh. for the historian. Uh -huh. But then in all of this, too, that the historian got to tell the story to somebody. 
And who is he going to tell it to? He's going to tell it to the people, but more importantly, to the youth, to the young people. So that's why we have the drama. And the drama is a boyhood image of Lionel Bellevue. Lionel is the engineer for the monument, but also the engineer, and I got to throw this out there, for three bridges here in the United States that I know of in Savannah, mm -hmm. in Charleston, and in Brunswick, Georgia. So Lionel represents the youth who must look at all of this right here, now interpret it, and then go forward. Mm -hmm. And so, but he also represents, as I'd say excitingly, the only king to come out of the American Revolution, <laughs> an African king, wow. King Henri Christophe. Wow. And so I tell folks this, some people say, Henri Christophe. I say, no, you don't disrespect him. That's King Henri Christophe. You got to get that right, King Henri Christophe. Now. I've been standing here, this is a beautiful, beautiful place here in Savannah, Georgia, and I've noticed so many tourists coming by, and you being a part of making this happen, I cannot thank you enough. Okay, you and everybody else involved. How does it make you feel to see that this vision, as you're, you play the role here, coming to pass? It's, it's surreal. And to give you some backdrop with regard to this, why was this square chosen? Uh -huh. It was Mayor Adams. Uh -huh. Mayor Adams understood that he said that there's going to be a monument, he said, that will be in Savannah and working with the Haitian American Historical Society. Mm -hmm. There will be a monument. And he said the monument will not be on a square that's off the beaten path. Mm -hmm. He then said the monument will be on Franklin Square because this is where a major tourist area in the city. And he wanted everyone who comes into Savannah, they come to the city market, come in, doing tours, mm -hmm. they're going to have to see this monument. So it's the vision of Mayor Adams, and in wow. back of us, or in back of me, is historic First African Baptist Church. Wow. So that's why he wanted all this to now be a part of this amazing story, and that he wanted folks to know about these brave men, the affront you will come from IIT and fight here in the American Revolution. So he had the vision about making sure it was right here on the square. Well, definitely, we are here watching the vision come to pass. There's nothing like having a plan, a goal, and executing it. This is absolutely amazing. Looking at our viewers and talking to them, um, what would you like them to know, the, the Haitians and even the ones that are not Haitian about this monument? This represents all of our story. As we say, mm -hmm. the diaspora, yes. the diaspora, that's where all the children of Mother Africa. Mm -hmm. Because I tell folks, I say, yeah, yeah, IET, Mother Haiti. Haiti is the mother of all of us yes. in the Americas wow. and around the entire world. So we, we show proper homage to our mother. And that again, as I tell folks, Haiti is the mother of independence in the Americas. Wow. No matter what someone else says, and that we need everyone to understand that and know that and embrace that. Wow. So there you have it. I am being educated today, and I know a lot of the viewers are, but we are going to be back after these videos. Mon ka viv nan bra wot, si ou pa pral nan bi ou vot nan dat 3 novam nan, nou sik jere ou voye bil ten vot ou la pos avan lendi 19 oktob pou asire la prive avan jou eleksyon an. Ou ka delivre bil ten vot ou tou an person soti 7 nan maten jiska 7 nan aswe nan nepot bi ou vot ki fet pou sa depi 19 oktob pou rive 1er novam. Sonje si yen bil ten vot ou ou menm epi pa bay moun ou pa konen li. Pou lokal bi ou vot pou vote avan jou eleksyon an ou bien pou delivre bil ten vot ou tan pri visite bra wot soe.org. And I'm saying so saying. This is the hottest show in the world right now. I'm ready to be good as good step up when I'm waiting. Même les ou en tour, c'est moi même qui m'en dois pardon. Bye bye, au revoir. Va, va, va. Elephant Man represent. 5 sur 5 TV. They gave me nothing. Hey, so. Ooh, itching already. <laughs> One of the signs. I'm telling you, I was amazed when some of the things you were saying. I'm a shorty that's deep in love. Makes me believe. Woo, child, we talking about 2001, 2002. I'm going to show them otherwise. Man, I do me. <laughs> Has anyone seen that booty? <laughs> I'm pleasing him and music. I'm happy to be here. I know you are. Together we do the work. When I make music, I don't make it for me. I always sing one or two songs as a drummer.
And we are back. Dr. Ture, we know with everything in life, every plan, every goal, everything, everywhere we're trying to go, there's always challenges. What are some of the challenges, if any, that you have with the other um, seven men bringing this vision to pass? It was some of the basic things with regards to getting gathering the history, because then we have to, we have committees here in the city. You just can't put a monument up. You got to then present it to them. They have to understand what the monument is about, and then also understand the importance of the monument with the accuracy with regards to the story. So that was one of the things. And then also the location of the monument. But what we had on our side, I said God, God was with us with Mayor Adams in place, and that's what some of us said because he was the mayor at the time. That made it easier with regards to this. So he had already understood the importance of having monuments to tell our story. And so he was right there in the entire process. So he wasn't on the outside. But then also it comes down to the funding, the monies. Because that's a, you can't have a monument without having mon the funds, right. without having the dollars. And so then that, that, that final push, that ultimate victory, that's when Lieutenant Colonel uh, Rudy Moise brought it about. So that's why I think those are the major things, the funding that was needed, and then also just having the vision and then being able to sell the vision to other people that they bought into it. And that's what happened. Wow, what a remarkable, remarkable story. You know, we're just, again, just so grateful. So it being here, you explained to me some of the challenges. What would you say was the time frame? Was this something you thought of three months ago? Or, you know, like the Wall of China and all of a sudden it was done. What was the time frame? We're looking from 2000, wow. 2000 to 2007 when this finally comes about. Wow. From 2000 to so seven years. Seven years. Seven years. And that's why, again, it's the long process. The process of going down to Miami, mm -hmm. folks coming up to Savannah, mm -hmm. then us going to Haiti, uh, going wow. right to the St. Mark, going to Port-au-Prince, meeting the prime minister there also, mm -hmm. Yvonne Neptune, and sharing with him what was going on, the delegation. We say the delegation. And sharing with people what's happened and having events in North Miami and then letting people know that there now is a partnership that is happening right here, wow. that we're going to make this happen. Mm -hmm. And so, again, 2000. 2007. Wow. It's just being steadfast. And now we said that's a part of the sacrifice, part of the, uh, the wonderful movement wow. to our story to be told. Which is remarkable. So now do you think they're teaching this in the schools here? And um, how do you think the tourists are rec uh, receiving it? Are they being clear on what this is, what it symbolizes? What well, with the school system, still with, uh, with us, and I, I share this to people. Uh -huh. I say that most of us do not know, know American history. Mm -hmm. We know American mythology. Again, we know American mythology, and we share that as opposed to American history. Mm -hmm. So when folks come out here, and that's the tourists and others who are uh, tour operators, when they come here and they start seeing this monument, they're like, wait a minute, I never knew the story. Mm -hmm. So for some of them, it begins to cause them now to explore more. Wow. And then so the tourists who, comes in, who will come into Savannah today, mm -hmm. when they see the monument, they say, I never knew about this. Wow. And so for them, a seed is now planted. For them mm -hmm. now to go back home and now to go look up this right here or to show their friends the pictures that they see. So this might become something fitting mm -hmm. that's unique for us right here in Savannah, but also a world story, international story that people now are going to look and say, wow, I didn't know that Haitians fought in the American Revolution. Yes, and Haitians didn't know some of them. That's right. And so now what happens, they begin to open up their minds. Right. So they now begin to have a, have a different perspective towards Haiti. Right. They start saying, wait a minute. We wouldn't be free in the United States as mm -hmm. a nation today if it was not for Haitians. Exactly. And I tell folks, that's what we got to do. We got to promote that and put that out there. Don't have any shame about that. Let it be known. Let it be acknowledged. Because when people begin to understand that, mm -hmm. they look at us differently. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Well, gosh, with all the different men involved with bringing this to pass, um, I would like to ask you specifically, what who inspired you to be a part of this? <laughs> <laughs> I have to go and say that it was tied to family. Okay. Being exposed to family, mm -hmm. uh, but them exposing me to history. Mm -hmm. and again, not mythology, but being exposed to history. Mm -hmm. So that piqued my interest and that desire. And so then I began to read these accounts of General Toussaint L'Overture, mm -hmm. Emperor Jean Jacques Dessalines the Magnificent, who he called Papa Dessalines, Jean Jacques. Oh, then wow. President Alexander Pétion and King Henri Christophe. Then I'm known about them. But then later on, I'm like surprised that, bam, and this again as a kid, mm -hmm. I find out that Haitians fought in Savannah. Yeah. So now as a kid, I'm intrigued by that. 
So I want to know more. Yeah. So I begin to explore more and begin to find out the stories. And then start finding out the ties of Haitians here, right here in Savannah, mm -hmm. who are now operating underground schools here in Savannah to educate other Africans. That Haitians are right here now beginning to, to set the promise with regards to us, with regards to freedom right here. Mm -hmm. So all this and now I'm starting saying, wait a minute. Haiti got a connection here. Yes. And so now just exploring more and then going on and then learning more about Boke Mine and then, Ooh. you know, Cecily Fata Mine and I'm throwing about Boy came on. And <laughs> so the it. connection. So yes. that's what happened. In fact, I'll tell you what occurred. Mayor As one of the first times we go to Miami, mm -hmm. there's a reception for us down there in Miami. Oh. <laughs> so Mayor Adams, when we're being presented and they're giving, doing, they're giving us some of the food, of course, uh -huh. Mayor Adams said, Jamal, do something. And I looked at him like, what? <laughs> Because I do living history. So yeah. then that's when I'm like, what? He said, do something. So that's what I did. I started talking about Bok Man. Oh. I started talking about Boke <laughs> Man. I started with Cecily Fata Man. I began talking about that. I talked about how people came together. Mm -hmm. And I said, that's what happened. I said, what's happening in Savannah right now? We've come together just like Boke Man uh -huh. to bring about liberation of a story. And uh -huh. so later on, I had some of the folks there from, I, from Miami. Mm -hmm. They said, you know what? We were saying that the one thing missing here are the ancestors. Wow. And they said, as soon as we were saying that at our table, that's when you came on. So then they asked me to say, are you Haitian? <laughs> say, so there you have it. Haitians in the Revolution War that fought right here in Savannah. We'll be back. <laughs>just getting here a wealth a wealth of information and how Haitians were a part of the of course the American Revolution and there's so many other things that our viewers watching don't know about the Louisiana Purchase Haitians being part in the Chicago let's elaborate just a little bit on the Louisiana Purchase and then go into the Chicago yes indeed and see a lot of times people look at in American history about the Louisiana Purchase Thomas Jefferson I tell folks no I said, that's not something that just pops up like that. Mm -hmm. That is actually tied to the victory of IT, tied okay. to Papa Dessalin, yes. tied to President Pechon, mm -hmm. King Henri Christophe, mm -hmm. that what happened, Napoleon is so upset because Haiti was the jewel of North America. Yes. A lot of people don't realize that, that when we, like, we talk about this, that Haiti, when Napoleon will lose Haiti, mm -hmm. he like, I don't care about North America anymore because I lost the crown jewel. In fact, people don't realize that Haiti was called the richest colony of all time in the world. Yes. So here you go, Jefferson now realized Napoleon is no longer concerned about that area in the Midwest. Mm -hmm. 
So that's why he now sells that, or the land is now sold to Thomas Jefferson in the United States. So if it was not for the Haitian Revolution mm -hmm. and the victory in ha Haiti, okay. the United States would not be what it is today. Yes. So that's why I'm like, it's not just, they think just the purchase. I'm like, no, it's all tied to the Haitian Revolution and the wow. success there. Wow, and then wow. So go powerful. up the river, go to DuSabo, du uh -huh. Jean Baptiste DuSabo. Yes. Again, Chicago. Mm -hmm. Well, that's tied to, again, our story and the connection to IT. Exactly. And that's why I said that's powerful with regards so to what we talk powerful. Took. And you go to Charleston, South Carolina. Mm. You have Demont Vesey, who is from IT, who plans on freeing all the Africans in Charleston, South Carolina during wow. this time period. And he even wrote a letter, I want to say to President Boyer, mm -hmm. to say, send us people up here, soldiers up here to help us fight for our freedom. So, so many things and so many ways Haitians have been involved right here in America That's in right. the success of America. So many people don't get to know that information. And I am so glad that we're, we have the opportunity today to share this information for the people who don't know. Absolutely. You know, and so it's not just the American Revolution. You have the Louisiana, we, um, um, the Louisiana Purchase, and you have Chicago was right. founded yeah. by a Haitian man. That's right. That's right. He was he was a merchant, a trader. So that was so Dusabo is right there. So not even this fantastic art museum that's in Chicago named for Dusabo. Mm -hmm. So again, we see all that. And then I throw out there, and they, it's not just going back say 1700s, 1800s. Mm -hmm. Even in the 2000s, I see Lionel Bellevue. Uh -huh. That when you see Bridges here in the United yes. States, Haitian American. That yes. again, so the history is alive and is vibrant and is still continuing. So that's why we got to continue to tell the story. Now, tell me, and it's not just Haitians, I think it's black in general, but why do you think it is that we don't get the recognition? You have people, um, I mean, I grew up here in the States and I never knew. I had to research for myself to find out about the Louisiana Purchase, to find out about Chicago. Think, you know, thank God I went to a school that was very pro-black and they taught yes. me a lot of that stuff. Um, why do you think it, that is so hidden? <laughs> the whole history, yes, black yes. history alongside uh, with yes. Haitian. Um, I've shared earlier about an African proverb. The proverb goes, the hunter will always be the hero of the story until the lion has a historian. Very profound. So what's going on? We're, start, we're looking at the stories and looking at the stories from the version of the hunter. Mm -hmm. So the lions are the ones who have a story that needs to be told. And they're not even articulate. They're not telling it. So that's why it becomes so important for this monument to tell a part of that story. Now the lions have not taken charge. Yeah. Those Aishan lions have not taken charge. They're not telling the story. Those sto African lions are not telling the story. That's why it's so crucial for us mm -hmm. to tell our story. Very, very important, and I am so glad all of this is coming in the forefront. And of course, you know, we used to have the encyclopedias, now we have the Google. So much information. If you don't know this information, you can do the research, you can find out on your own. This is just incredible to, to, to have all this you know, in the fin in, in, in our fingertips, basically. That's and again, right. I, can, I don't know how to say thank you to you and all the men involved, Dr. Moise and so many other people, but we are going to the videos. We'll be coming back because I have a couple of more questions for you. <laughs> That's fine. You know, I mean, like you're educating me now. <laughs> Big up, sing so sing. This is the hottest show in the world right now. I'm ready to be good as good step up when I'm wearing. Même les ouan tour, c'est moi même qui m'ont donné pardon. Bye bye, au revoir. Va va va. Elephant Man represents. Sing so sing TV. They gave me nothing. Hey so. Ooh, itching already. <laughs> One of the signs. I'm telling you, I was amazed when some of the things you were saying. I'm a shorty that's deep in love. Makes me believe. Woo, child, we talking about 2001, 2002. I'm going to show them otherwise. Man, I do me. <laughs> Has anyone seen that movie? <laughs> I'm pleasing him in music. I'm happy to be here. I know you are. Together we do the work. When I make music, I don't make it for me. I always sing one or two songs as a drummer.
So, Dr. Ture, we talked about so much, not to mention all the stuff we're leaving out because of time. For example, the Tuskegee Airmen, Haitians being involved in that, the Titanic. Uh, Okay. Mr. LaRoche, if I think his name is correct. Yes. uh Yes, we're just so involved in so many different things. But we want to talk a little bit about you. What are your current ventures right now? And where are you going? What's the plans for the future? <laughs> Continue to tell the story, doing living history. And as we share, folks, we are at JLA, mm-hmm. and that's D-J-E-L-I. Now, most people hear the word griot, mm-hmm. and we tell folks that's a French word. Mm-hmm. The people who chronicle our history, those on the African continent, mm-hmm. we didn't call them griots. We say JLA is jale musos. So wow. that's why I tell our story. It doesn't matter where you're from. If you're from Brazil, mm-hmm. we're going to tell the story. From Curaçao, we're going to tell a part of the story. And that's what we do. We have an event coming up in November mm-hmm. tied to Gullah Geechee culture. Okay. Now, some folks say Gullah Geechee. Mm-hmm. And who are they? They're black folks from Jacksonville, North Carolina, mm-hmm. down in St. Augustine, Florida. And we crack a teeth like this year. Okay. Oh, we have a language also. And when I've had people from IT, I go and say, who you think you for be? You ain't for be Mati Delo? <laughs> some say, Delo? They say, Mati? Uh, like, yeah, some people know, in mm-hmm. Creole, that means master of water. Wow. So I'm saying, but we have that language also right here in this area. And so we t- promoted our story, our history, and our culture by showing the connection to all of us. Mm-hmm. And so that's what we have planned this year, closing out this year, then our museum in Riceboro, Georgia, Geechee Kunda. Mm-hmm. And we plan on having, after COVID, that wow. we'll be back open and we'll be doing all the same thing, making the connections to our story wow. and doing, going wherever people want us to go. And we've been to IT, I've been to Jacques Mel, done programs in Jacques ah. Mel. So again, so you know, we go there to tell the story. Very, very nice. Now, you mentioned a couple of events. How can people find you if they want to participate? If somebody wants you to be a guest speaker, let our viewers know the best way to contact you. Great. great. You know, and you, uh, if you have any websites or social media. Great. Telephone number. Telephone number is 912-220-5966. I'll repeat, 912-220-5966. Five nine six six. You can call or text me. Email address dayclean h h i d a y c l e a n h h i at yahoo.com. We're twenty four hours, and we also do tours here in the city of Savannah. Yes. We do tours in the city, giving the history and the culture, and we come right here mm-hmm. to the monument and let folks know about King Henri Christophe. Wow, 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 wow. So basically you gave the information on how they, they can contact you and the upcoming events and yes. functions you have going on. You're you're just doing a lot. You're just everywhere. We're striving. So, and you mentioned Haiti. So you've been to Haiti. Yes. Any uh-huh. chances you speak Creole? <laughs> <laughs> See, now, if this will happen, folks would say, Jamal, you used to know Creole 10 years ago. No. We're not going to ask anything for you. <laughs> and like I said, I don't have people to talk with me. So oh, I, my gosh. So we tend to lose. So yeah, so I need somebody. I need somebody out there <laughs> to like help me out, teach me, so that way I got constant contact. There okay? you go. Now, very quickly um, before we leave, just tell the viewers anything you need them to know. Maybe even about the Haitian culture. For the ones who know it, the ones who don't know it, just briefly. What and based on this monument and all the stuff we've done here in America, what briefly would you want our viewers to know? Uh, I've had folks go and say to me that when you come into the Americas, and they said the place that you can get that sense of Africa being alive and being vibrant Mm -hmm. is Haiti. And so now they even going there and being a Port-au-Prince that they said, you see Africa in the Americas proper in Haiti. Mm -hmm. And I said, that's fitting. That's important for us to understand that and for us to embrace it. That way have that reverence and respect for Haiti. Mm -hmm. I have it, and so all of you need to have it too. (laughs) So there you have it. Thank you for watching Sinks to Sink TV. Big enough sing so sing. This is the hottest show in the world right now. I'm ready to be good as good step up when I'm waiting. Même les ou en tour, c'est moi même qui m'en dois pas donc. Bye bye, au revoir. Va, va, va. Elephant Man represent. Sing so sing TV. They gave me nothing. Hey, so. Ooh, itching already. <laughs> One of the signs. I'm telling you, I was amazed when some of the things you were saying. I'm a shorty that's deep in love. Makes me believe. Woo, child, we talking about 2001, 2002. I'm going to show them otherwise. Man, I do me. <laughs> Has anyone seen that booty? <laughs> I'm pleasing him and music. I'm happy to be here. I know you are. Together we do the work. When I make music, I don't make it for me. I always sing one or two songs as a drummer.
Sync to Sync TV would like to thank our sponsors. Today's show was brought to you by Ideal Professional Institute, author Nelda Jean, Haitian American Chambers of Commerce, Crab King's Restaurant, and Reaching Solutions. Thank you for joining us today, and don't forget to join us next time.